So hi everybody. So this video I'm going to try to give you a few examples and differentiate between subjective, empirical and theoretical probability. So what's the difference between the three? So I guess I'll talk a little bit about them and then we'll just dive into the examples which will hopefully clarify things just a little bit more for you. So subjective probability is based on your own intuitions or a group's intuition um, on the experience maybe that you had on the hunch that you're feeling and you're just making statements without actually doing any kind of um, results or calculations to try to see what the true values might be. Okay, so subjective is pretty much as the word okay, in, entails, it is based on one's own intuition or hunches. Empirical means basically you're conducting an experiment. So sometimes, you know, you'll do statistical experiments, right? So you can create surveys or you can create re uh, randomized um, kind of uh, samplings that you may have and you might collect all the different data, which will then show you what actually is happening through an experiment for your sample size. All right, so that would be the probability based on actual experiments that maybe you have conducted or surveys that you've conducted in some way. Now, theoretical means that you are taking the entire sample space possible, okay? So all of the different possibilities that can happen and then see based on all of those possibilities what the probabilities will be. You haven't conducted anything in terms of an experiment, you're simply just writing things out and then seeing, okay, what can happen and then what is the probability of that happening? You know, a very famous kind of in the beginning in terms of probabilities is always tossing a coin. So if you toss a coin, you know, you know that you have a 50% chance okay, of heads and 50% chance of tails. But if you did the empirical results, so if you only tossed a coin once, it's not like you can get heads and tails on the same thing. You're either going to get heads or you're either going to get tails. Okay, so there's a big difference between theoretical and empirical. So let's show some examples and then hopefully that might clarify it a little bit more. All right, and I'll talk through them. So here I present to you numerous examples. Okay, so the first one is you took a coin and you flipped it 20 times. The result was 14 out of the 20 tails and then 6 out of the 20 heads. So what would this be? Would this be subjective? Would this be empirical? Or would this be theoretical? Well, because you've actually conducted this experiment, so you actually took the coins and you flipped them yourself, you can actually see exactly what is happening, right? So empirically, you can kind of tell, all right, okay, this is how many tails I got. This is how many heads I have. So you haven't made a subjective result, it is based on an actual experiment that you see, and then you're just calculating them. So this would be an empirical probability. It's based on an experiment that you have conducted. All right, so I'll put here empirical for and an E for that. The second one that you have there is an investor looks at the stock market from the past few weeks and then concludes that today the market must be going up and bets $100 on the Apple stock or on any stock for that matter. This is very subjective. Uh, I wish that we could know, all right, what would happen to the stock markets because we would get rich very fast, but we do not know, okay? It's extremely randomized, so we have no idea. It doesn't really matter what has happened in the past per se, and that today, we're just making a guess. So we're getting a hunch, so this would be subjective. So that's what we have there. Now, the next one is a student wants to find out how many of her peers in the whole class go on social media before they eat their first meal. So she conducts a poll of the whole class. So basically finds out all the information from the class and then looks at the results and concludes after that, that 98% of the students go on social media, okay, before their first meal, which probably might be actually true. Um, so I don't know, I didn't conduct this okay, experiment. So what is this? Okay, is this theory, right? Um, or is it based on empirical results or is it very subjective? Okay, so this turns out that it's empirical. Um, you know, so this particular student actually conducted and then is just 
has the actual results okay, in front of them and it shows that it's 98% of the students go on social media before their first meal, all right? So that's what happens um, there. Now, if she just concluded okay, that this is true for all students, then that would actually be subjective in, in a way because you wouldn't be able to get the entire population. You can get a, maybe a hunch of where things might go, okay, but that would be um, a subjective way of trying to project it out into everybody else. Okay, but based on the class, you have the empirical results. Now, the next one, a deck of 52 cards has a probability of a 10 card showing up as 4 out of 52. So this is actually theoretical. So you haven't done anything, right? You haven't done a, a result or anything like that. Okay, you're simply taking the entire sample space. So you have 52 cards in total. And how many tens are there in a deck? There are four tens in a deck. So this actually turns out to be theoretical result. Next one, a teacher speaking to a class concludes that the whole class of students have cell phones. So I sometimes make that assumption and I mean, I guess most of the time it's true, but it's not always true. So this is actually very subjective, right? If I um, asked, okay, all the students and we did a poll or a survey or something like that, we can actually find out the empirical true result of this. But the way that it is stated, it's just subjective. Next one, you wake up with a stomach ache and conclude that for sure it is caused by the burrito you ate last night. Again, subjective, all right? So if you're making conclusions based on your own feelings and hunches, okay, sometimes they're correct, um, but not necessarily always, all right? So this would be subjective. Next, your chances of rolling less than four with a single die is 50%. So in this case, this would be theoretical, okay? So notice that if we have a die, so um, you know we have a die, let's say from one to six that you can roll, let's, let's assume that it's a fair die. So if you're rolling less than four, that means you either rolled a one, a two, or a three, all right? So that's three out of the six, and three out of the six is 50%, and that is just theoretical result, okay? You haven't actually rolled the die numerous times and then tried to see what the result might be. Next one, a grandfather talks to his grandkids and tells them that the rain is coming because his knees are hurting. All right. So, you know, sometimes you will find that people, you know, either have aches or pains or something as, as maybe, you know, temperature changes or pressure changes. So it might be true in some sense, but at the end of the day, this is very subjective. All right. Okay. So this would be subjective. Last one, you have been flipping a coin three times and all flips have been heads. The next time you say must be tails. And we get fooled like this, right? And then gamblers get fooled like this because, you know, they're gambling and they say, you know, next time I know that I'm going to win, um, you know, because I haven't won, you know, in so many times. And so unfortunately, again, this is just subjective, okay, based on your feelings. Okay, that you may have. Okay, the reality is if you're flipping a coin, uh, it doesn't matter that you know if it's three times it was heads, if it's a fair coin, of course, you know, if you're gonna flip a coin, it's still 50-50. That's what you have. Okay. So those were some examples of you know subjective, okay, then you had some empirical, and then you had some theoretical. So I hope that these give you a little bit of a, a glimpse, okay, so that you can distinguish between you know the theoretical experiments in terms of empirical and then subjective, which is hunches, intuitions that you may have, or you're drawing conclusions based on certain things that you've seen in the past. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye everybody.